Every issue is a new perspective on the world. Every fork shows the different possible futures. Every commit sparks an innovation. Every merge is a step forward. In Open Euler, a firm belief in innovation is achieved with every keystroke, opening a world of possibilities. Hi, I'm Jenna. Hi, I'm Nate, and welcome to Open Euler Tech Day. Open Euler Tech Day covers a diverse range of topics from Linux distributions and uh, Open Euler Basics to applications in different scenarios. In this first episode, we'll talk about the operating system, or OS, the origin of Linux, and introduce Open Euler OS, its key features, and how to download and install the system. During each episode live stream, we would also ask our audience some questions. You can type your answers in the chat window. We look forward to hearing from you. Before stepping into the world of Linux and Open Euler, let's first go over what an OS is all about. Undoubtedly, an OS is the most important software that runs on a computer. Yes, an OS is a program that controls and manages the hardware and software resources of a computer system. It provides a convenient interface and environment for the user and for the other software. Jianan, yeah. when you hear OS, what first comes to mind? Uh, like Windows, Android, OS, Mac OS, and Linux. Yes, these are all well-known OSs. One of these five operating systems is likely on every single one of your smart devices whether it's a computer, phone, or tablet. Here's our first question. Which OS do you think is the most popular and explain why? This question might lead to a bunch of different answers. Yeah, how about you, Nate? Hard to say. Um, I'd probably say for smartphones and pocket-sized devices, it's Android. Yeah. And for computers, like desktops and laptops, it's definitely mm -hmm. Windows. Yeah. Um, and then for tablets, uh, I'd probably say Apple's iPad OS. Uh, those are my guesses. Um, but I'm also interested in hearing what our audience has to say. So uh, let's take a look at uh, some of their responses. OK, let's have a look. Uh, please type your answers in the chat window. Okay, I see a lot of answers here. Let's wait for a while. Okay, I'll count to three. Three, two, one. Okay, I see different answers here, and uh, this one said Linux. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Linux mm -hmm. operating systems are widely used in numerous software applications, from large-scale social media platforms to gaming consoles to popular coding languages even. Linux is all around the Internet. Unlike Windows or Apple, Linux is a family of open-source Unix-like systems. In other words, anyone can modify and distribute it. Linux may be the least well-known of all the options on the list but it's free and available in many different open source versions. Before we dive into Linux, let's first go through the develop his development history of Unix. Can't wait to hear. Back in the 1960s, computers were not widely used, and only a small number of individuals could even access them. At that time, computer systems were used for batch processing, whereby multiple tasks were submitted to the computer at a single time. This required users to wait for the results, and no other interactions were supported during this process. Oh, what a waste of computing resources. Yes, it definitely was. In 1965, Bell Labs, MIT, and GE worked together to change this situation by developing a time-sharing multitasking system. Simply put, they realized the vision of multiple people using computers at the same time. The resulting computer system 
was named Multix, which is short for Multiplexed Information in Computing Service. Multix might have been too far ahead of its time, and Bell Labs eventually pulled out of the project. Oh, what a shame! What happened next? One man, Ken Thompson, was in the process of developing a game called Space Travel while working on Multix. When Bell Labs pulled out, Thompson was no longer able to use the Multix environment. He spent a, a month writing a small OS that was capable of running space travel. He named the small system Uniplexed Information and Computing Service as a play on words of Multix. These days, we call it Unix for short. Cool. So Unix is a multitasking and multi-user OS too. Yes, it was initially free of charge. And its security, efficiency, and portability made it ideal for servers. Later, it was commercialized. Many high-end applications and large-scale data centers use the Unix system. Some larger hardware companies have developed different versions of Unix based on their own computer systems, like AIX, HPUX, and Digital Unix. In 1984, an open source, source version of the Unix utility was launched. What does open source mean here? Open source is a term that originally referred to open source software. Open source software is code that is designed to be publicly accessible. That is, anyone can see, modify, and distribute the code as they see fit. It lays foundations for the rapid development of IT technologies. That's interesting. But how can developers protect their source code? Don't worry. We have open source licenses. A software license is a legal agreement that defines how a given piece of software can be used. For software developers who may want to exercise certain rights, permissions, and control over how their work is used, modified, and shared by others. Choosing a software license is an important decision.、Uh, can you go over some of the mainstream open source licenses? Of course, I'll introduce Mulan, GPL, and LGBPL here. Tell me more about them. Mulan is China's first open source license. It grants every contributor a permanent, global, free, non-exclusive, and irrevocable copyright license. Under the license, you can copy, modify, and distribute your contributions, regardless of whether they are modified or not. You know GPL. Yeah, GPL is a free copyleft license for software and other kinds of works. It applies two measures to protect the rights of programmers:、uh, first, copyright protection for software, and a license for programmers. Uh, which gives them the legal permission to copy, distribute, and modify the software. Any software that uses, modifies, and derives from GPL class libraries must use the GPL license, which must be open source and free of charge. LGPL is an open source license designed for the use of class libraries. It's different from GPL in that LGPL allows Commercial software to use the LGPL class library in link mode without requiring open source commercial software code.、Uh -huh. The different licenses have different rules. We just mentioned that Unix provided outstanding security, efficiency, and portability. However, many universities could no longer use Unix, Unix due to its expensive licensing fees. So that's where Linux enters the picture, right? Bingo! In 1987, Andrew S. Tannenbaum, a professor of Vrije University in Amsterdam, wrote Minix. Similar to Unix, this OS was dedicated to teaching instead. On September 17, 1991, Linus Torvalds released the Linux OS on the internet. It made it free of charge. After his release. Thousands and thousands of contributors have helped turn Linux into what it is today. Okay, question time. And the full name of Linux is GNU slash Linux. So, what does GNU stand for? Does anyone have a good explanation for this? 
Oh, I'm really interested in hearing what our audience has to say. So uh, okay. let's, uh, let's get some uh, responses. Please type your answers in the chat window. Let's wait a while. Please type your answers here. Oh, okay. I see some answers coming yeah. in now. Uh, Any more? I'll count to three. Three, two, one. Okay. In my view, GNU stands for GNU is not Unix. It's a Unix-like Unix -like computer operating system. But uh, unlike Unix, it's free software and contains no Unix code. Yeah, I agree with that. So, what do you know about Linux's kernel? Okay, Linux kernel is the main component of a Linux OS, right? Yes, the kernel is responsible for maintaining the important abstractions of the OS. Kernel code executes in kernel mode with full access to all of the physical resources of the computer. User space code executes on a much more limited environment in order to provide higher security to the system and to abstract from different types of hardware. Today, there are many derivatives based on the Linux kernel. These include Red Hat, Open, SUS, Ubuntu, Deepin, and, of course, Open Euler. Our most recent Open Euler release runs on Linux kernel 5.10. Open Euler is an open source OS that harnesses the full potential of computing processors. It's a highly reliable OS built by global contributors to fit database, big data, cloud computing, and artificial AI workloads. Open Euler has two kinds of releases, innovation and long-term support, or LTS. The innovation release is provided every six months between LTS releases, and it incorporates the latest technical advance achievements of Open Euler and other communities. The latest Open Euler 22.09 is an innovation release. Um, what about the LTS release? It's released every two years and comes with four years of maintenance and extended support. Um, the technology roadmap built on the kernel show here provides an overview of OS innovations. Open Euler comes with a complete set of OS functions and evolves on a seamless basis. It consists of the basic acceleration library, virtualization, kernel, driver, compiler, system tool, and open GDK, among other components. Open Euler now provides a wide array of features to account for the fast pace of technological development. Now we'll briefly introduce some of the key features. Atune is an automatic and intelligent performance tuning engine developed based on Open Euler. It adopts AI capabilities to ensure that services run optimally. Atune builds precise models for services running on the OS. It understands service features on a dynamic basis to infer specific applications, and it adjusts the parameters based on service loads to provide the optimal parameter configurations. Another key feature is Isolate, a container solution brand. It derives its name from a species of ant, one of the most powerful in insects in the world when you account for its small size. This metaphor of packing so much power into a small size perfect described, uh, describes the Isolate container technology solution. 
Then there's Stratovert, which is an enterprise-grade enterprise virtualization cloud platform that uses a single architecture to support VM, containers, and serverless data center scenarios. Stratovert has competitive advantages in terms of key technologies, such as lightweight and low noise software and hardware collaboration, and premium security, which uses the Rust language. Bisheng JDK is a high-performance open JDK distribution. It enhances stability on the ARM archi architecture and delivers improved performance in big data scenarios. Bisheng JDK is committed to providing Java developers with a stable, reliable, high-performing, and easy-to-debug easy to JDK. And then, last but not least, there's SecGear. This is a confidential computing development suite that aims to provide a comprehensive development framework for different hardware devices. It does that by shielding the differences between underlying, underlying confidential computing architectures and APIs. Currently, SecGear supports Intel SGX hardware and ARM Trust Zone. These features are really impressive. I heard the OpenEuler 22.09 has been released recently. And what refinements and innovations does OpenEuler 22.09 provide? OpenEuler 22.09 is designed to unleash diversified computing power, provide greater versatility, and come with optimized porting capabilities to seamlessly interconnect with Open Harmony. Thanks to the contributions from our tremendous community, OpenEuler 22.09 comprises 670 million lines of code. Such a large amount of code. How many developers have contributed to this release? 1,265 developers. This is an increase of 63% compared with the last release. Among the OpenEuler distributions, 20, uh, 22.09 has the largest group of contributors. Okay, how does OpenEuler 22.09 unleash diversified computing power? It does so by enlarging system image support, enhancing fault tolerance for various computing architectures, and adding support for RISC-V for a diverse range of operating environments. How should we best understand the concept of greater versatile? OpenEuler is designed for server, cloud, edge, and embedded scenarios. It supports multiple processing processor architectures, including Compunk, x86, and RISCV. It makes use of collaborative software hardware optimization to maximize computing power. Let's watch a short video about how this works. Wow, it's impressive. OK, time for our last question. How many developers have contributed to OpenEuler 22.09? Type your answer in the chat window. This is quite an easy one. Yeah, quite easy. Let's wait a while. Please type your answers here. OK. Still waiting. Still waiting. One thousand? Really? One thousand? Nope. Still waiting for a correct one. Two thousand? Okay, too much. <laughs> and 
anything else? Give me a number. Oh, I just saw the correct answer, and that is one thousand two hundred and sixty-five developers. Congrats. What if I want to try Open Euler? When can I uh, download it? To download Open Euler, first visit the Open Euler website. Click on Download. Software, and then Packages. Then click on Server Image below Open Euler 22.09. The ISO list will display. Next, select the ISO image file based on your OS architecture. For example, AARCH64. Lastly, select the target Open Euler release package. I have downloaded the desired release package, but how can I install it? Let's take a look at this installation process. We've downloaded the release process, so the installation environment is ready. So we can go directly to step two? Yes. We'll need to select an installation mode first. If only a few devices need to be installed, use a USB flash drive, CD-ROM, or a virtual CD-ROM drive. But if batch installation is required, uh, you should use the PXE boot mode. Like other operating systems, after selecting the mode, we'll need to configure required parameters, right? Yes, such as the installation language, installation location, software version, host name, and network configuration. OK, got it. Uh, can you show us how this process works? Of course. Uh, I'll use Open Euler 20.03 LTS and the virtual DVD-ROM drive as an example to show you how to install this OS step by step. So uh, on the installation page, you'll want to select an installation option. OK, I see three options here. So we can directly install the OS, check the software package, and install the system, or view troubleshooting information. Yes, select the option that's best for your situation. Here we've selected test this media and install Open Euler 20.03 LTS. Then, Select an installation language. Here we've selected English, uh, United States. After that, set the system installation location and system partitions. We'll need to select the drive where the OS is to be installed and choose how to partition the drive. Any advice on the partitions? You can set the partitions manually, including common partitions, logical volumes, and thin provisioning logical volumes. We'd recommend that you set the following partitions for the Open Euler System Starter. And these are swap, boot, boot slash EFI, and slash. Um, can you provide more information about the partitions? Swap partition is used to swap dirty data in the memory when space is insufficient. If the memory is small, we'd recommend that you set the swap partition size to twice the memory size. And if the memory is large, you can reduce the swap partition size. Uh, slash boot indicates booting. Boot slash EFI refers to the boot device and application program to be started by the extensible firmware interface, otherwise known as EFI. The last one refers to the root partition? Yes. In Linux, everything starts from the root partition. OK, what should we do next? Select the software to be installed, which is um, Open Euler 20.03 
LTS supports three software installation options. And those are minimum installation server and hypervisor. Yeah, I know the server option means installing software for servers and uh, hypervisor means installing software in virtualization scenarios. But what is minimum installation? Good question. For minimum installation, most software is not installed. This mode is suitable for scholars who have basic knowledge of Linux and want to expand their knowledge of the Linux architecture. Now, we've come to the last step, right? Yep. During the installation, we'll need to set the password of the root user. While you can create common users uh, to suit your needs, the root user is the super administrator of the system and has the highest permissions. Generally speaking, the Linux administrator can't use this user to manage the system. Okay, now we've gone through the entire process of open user download and installation. We are also at the end of the today's live stream. Let's go over what we've learned today. Uh, we've learned the origins of Linux and the key features in OpenEuler, and we went through the detailed steps for downloading and installing OpenEuler. If you want to know more and engage in community contributions, please visit our GitHub repo. We can't wait to see you in the OpenEuler community. In the next episode of Open Euler Tech Day, we'll go into some more details about Open Euler key features and practices. Stay tuned. That's all for today. Till then, see you next time. See you.